Welcome to another episode of the Coach Joe Lamy podcast. Um, this is our 50th episode. Um, so I want to say a big thank you to everyone that supported the journey. Um, and I hope that these episodes have brought value to you uh, and to the listeners. So for this special episode, I had to go and get a special guest. I had to go and get a former Premier League player, currently as well, working as an elite performance coach, mentor, um, keynote speaker um, at Made Leaders. I want to introduce Michael Dubry. Michael, welcome to the show, bro. Thanks for coming on. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Buzzy, I didn't realise it was the 50th. I'm like a sort of special guest. So You're the special one, nice. bro. <laughs> and it's a nice one. It's a nice one. It's a nice one. I'd have wore, I'd have wore something gold. I'd have wore something gold if I'd have known. No, 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 that T-shirt, we're going to talk about that as well. I like, I like the branding. I like the branding yeah. behind that as well. But, but before we go into it, you know, the yeah. word leader gets thrown around quite a lot, you know, especially in football, yeah. especially like when you, not even just in football, in, in a working environment. Yeah. Like what, what does it mean to be a leader to you? Because you've been a leader on a pitch, you know, you've had that captain's armband as well before. So yeah, like speaking I mean, from experience. For me, like you say, the, the word leader and leadership is, is like sort of like one of the buzzwords about everyone, I want a leadership leader. Um, and there's, you know, everyone has their own interpretation. For me, a leader is someone that inspires you to be better, do better, want to become better. So if you're someone that inspires someone to want to do better, want to become better, want to strive for better, mm -hmm. then you're a leader. And not every leader has an armband. Not every leader is the, the manager. Not every leader is the boss. You know, people, you know, playing football, you follow, you don't always follow the captain because he's not a good leader. You know, the, the captain is just someone who, who is abusing his power. Um, and, you know, and the leader might be the man playing alongside you that's always striving, encouraging, and you follow him because he inspires you. You know what, like, if he can give 100%, I'm going to give 100%. And you, mm. you listen to his words, he inspires you. So for me, leader is someone that, inspires you to want to be better want to do better want to become better want to strive for better want to strive for more um, and that for me is what a leader is and and that's what I, I always try to do trying to get people to become better trying to do better uh, when I was playing because not every team I was the captain um, and so it was for me it's like I don't need the armband yeah, armband yeah. Was, was 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 great because you're the faces team and it just shows to outside the club this is the, the the face of our team. But inside the dressing room, we all know who the leader was and who we used to follow. So that's, for me, what um, a leader is. No, no, for, no, I definitely agree with you. And would you say the characteristics of a leader is something that they're sometimes selfless and they always put others in front of themselves? Is that something that you would agree on? Yeah, I, I think that... Um, I, I think there's time in... I, I recently, I, I put this um, quote out and sometimes, you know... Um, there's times when you, you you lead from the front and there's times when you put others first, you know, in your language, you know, we, sometimes, you know, might say, I, you know what, that's me. Mm -hmm. You know what, that, no, we done well. You know, a leader sometimes knows how to, to, to group everyone together, whether to put everyone in front, whether to stand and take it himself. Um, and I think that, lead, I think le leadership skills, you, know, you haven't got to be, uh, an extrovert to be a leader. Some people think mm. the leader is like the loudest one in, in, in the room. I think sometimes, especially nowadays, people people nowadays tend to, uh, for the wrong reason, people tend to follow popularity. People tend to follow um, what's hip, what's in, what's new. But overall, in general, especially in the workplace, people want to tend to follow the best. Mm -hmm. Who's good at something? how well they do it and they tend to follow. So you could be the quietest man in the office, in the change room, but when you go and do your craft, your work, you're really good at it. People yeah. want to follow that because I want to be where he is and how he is. So you, you tend to lead by example, or you can be the one that, the vocal one that can be speaking and, and talking it through. People tend to lead and, and follow. So with a leader, I think, yes, he's selfless, but, but he understands that sometimes he has to, stand in front mm -hmm. and sometimes you have to put himself first because you know that the, the saying you know when you go on an airplane you know um put your life jacket on first before you yeah. help others because otherwise you're you know you're no good if you're drowning you're just putting everyone down so sometimes you have to make sure that you're in a, a position to help others mm -hmm. so a leader i think under, understands that but sometimes a leader leads from different ways by example um vocally um both 
Um, so there, there's, there's, there's different ways, but I think people's idea of a leader is grouped together by who inspired them. So they're going to take bits from, I remember my coach from over there, I remember my teacher from there. I liked what he done. He got the best out of me. So people then start puzzling together what inspired them, what made them want to do well. Mm. And then they start shaping together their own vision of leadership. And, and who would you say inspired you to, to where you are today? Uh, as, as far as um, uh, leaders, that, that I was, when I was the, the first leader as such that I, I looked at when I was, I remember uh, I was at school and it was a Martin Luther King mm-hmm. and, uh, and I just liked him. I, I love people that, um, that are articulate with their words. Mm-hmm. I like words. I like people that can speak. So I'm not the sort of person that responds to someone, ah, the captain, sergeant yeah. major shouting. I'm like, you're not going to get me that way. But some who's articulate can help with words and like, you know, like, listen, dudes, listen, you can get someone who's articulate with their words. I like that. So the Martin Luther King had can speak either, you know, you know, you had Martin Luther King and you had Malcolm X, two different variations of, 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 you know, being a lead. Yeah, being leadership. uh, Malcolm X was good with his words and he he galvanized people Mm -hmm. with his words. But he had a little bit of, you know, he was more active where, you know, Martin, uh, Martin Luther King was a little bit more passive. Um, it's a different, but they're, they're good with their words. Barack Obama later yeah, on, yeah. great with his words, inspiring. So you're, you're going to listen and, and get it. So I've always like shaped towards that. So then when I started getting into football, the coaches that could speak to me mm. were the ones that, you know, the ones that go, ah, you know, back in the day that, you know, the, it was, it was very autocratic shout and in your face, ah, Sergeant Major. Sergeant, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like even in life now, um, Anyone can say anything they want to me. It's just how you say it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's mm-hmm. in your delivery. It's in your tone. So, you know, don't get me wrong. On a football pitch, it's fast paced. It's fast paced. And, you know, sometimes, you know, ah, and you're shouting, you're, you're you know, energetic, you know. Ah, but it's in the words you use. The we power all know the words. Language and, yeah, yeah. Sometimes people using words like, like, right, that's not even, that's not instructive. That's not constructive. That's mm-hmm. not football mm-hmm. talk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't talk to me like that. But if you're going, get there, you might use effing, get there, yeah. come on there. You might use it, get there, all right. We have that. That's that's just part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Like, not like you, you effing idiot. Mm. Yo, that's not even that's not even part of this game. Who are you mm-hmm. talking to? Mm-hmm. So there's different bits where people can, and their language and how they, but I, all the leadership, I, I like someone that can articulate themselves, can speak, can inspire, and is constructive with their words. So that's, mm. that's just, but Martin Luther King was the first ever one I'd say was, um, when it's like leaders and I just thought he was inspiring. So, you know, you know, then like, you know, nine all going, oh, he's a great leader. I'm just saying yeah. this guy is inspiring. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, Down yeah. the line when the leader, even the night, you know, going football, good captain, not a good captain. As you get older, you know, and now that, you know, people looking things are, he, he's a good leader. Yeah, the, the people at football will look at um, when I was playing, Dennis Wise was my captain, mm-hmm. but, you know, David Rowcastle for me was uh, a good leader for me. Um, uh, Marcel Desai, um, good, uh, Mark Hughes, um, because how they conduct themselves, they're ones I wanted to follow, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. more. I'd follow, you know, and listen to them more is because how they, they conduct themselves, their mannerisms. Um, Lucas Radaby, good leader, yeah, for yeah. me. Um, you know, he wasn't like a, the loudest person in the dressing room, he just was like, you know, done his job. In, on the pitch, you know, off the pitch, carried himself well. Um, Rio was a good leader. Um, um, he was, you know, he was part of the group. But then when he was playing, he stood and he, you know, led by example and was mm-hmm. very vocal with it. Um, you know, I looked down the line. Who else was, uh, I'd say, was, uh, they're the, the captains I looked at most. Gary Kelly was, I thought, was a good leader because mm-hmm. you wanted to follow him because of his personality. Um, David Batty just done his job, yeah, someone, yeah. you know, inspiring. Um, so there's different ones I look at, you know, and, you know, take, that's on the pitch, you know, you take the the sort of managers and you're thinking um, how many of them were good leaders, how many were just good managers, how many of them abused their positions of power, power yeah. how many were just, you know what I mean, how many were just like, you know, because people are put in position just through being there the longest, mm-hmm. not through earning it and credibility you know someone's a manager is he a good leader no he's just a manager he's just yeah. he's just the one in charge of the team and all that stuff doesn't make him a good leader because you're not always going to 
want to follow him. He doesn't mm. inspire you to do anything. He just has the power. You just have to listen. So, and that sometimes it's, it's, and them skills, I think only later on are coming into football because um, people are just managers and just, you know, you're, you're the manager and, and people just abuse that because I'm the manager now, you must do what I say. Mm. Um, and then when you strip that them of that, 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 authority that power they don't have nothing yeah, yeah. Do you know what i mean and it's the same with the armband of, of captains mm-hmm. you strip them of the armband and now they're they're with everyone in the change room no one's looking to like you just had the the captain's armband so mm-hmm. but now like that's why you take the armband off people and you know who's the leader there you know you yeah you watch you watch games you can see the ones that, that are leading and, and and authority you know like who can into the group telling helping Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's the ones you know you, you look at. So yeah, leadership is it's a buzzword, but it, it's it's so deep. You know, you look at kids' school teams, you see the ones that are gonna be the the leaders and take it mm-hmm. aboard. Um, you know, and, and, and that's what I say. I remember when I started made leaders, and uh, you know, I say leaders are made, not born. Yeah, because yeah. I don't think like you know everyone's a born leader. I think it's something that grows in you. It's something that you learn. It's it's skills you learn, and something that, that develops. You know, everyone can can develop the the skills of being a mm-hmm. leader. Yes, you have. You might start, you know, from a position ahead, but it's something that grows. It's like most, like even like talent, it only takes you natural take takes you that so, far. So, so yes, far, you might yeah. have a little bit of a little bit of leadership thing. It takes you so far. It's something that develops, something that learns, something that grows. John Terry was he going to be this leader he was when he finished his career when he was a young lad? Not at all. It's something mm. that grew, something that developed, something he worked on, something he he was always aspiring to be. So it's it's something that you you know you develop. It's a skill. It's an art. It's a craft. No, definitely, I agree with you. Like even myself, when I you know we we spoke about off air when I came to the country, I couldn't speak a word of English. So I was always like introverted. I didn't want to. I didn't know what was going on. Put it that way. Do you know what yeah, I mean? I didn't know yeah. what people were saying. So as I grew up, I I, I didn't come out of that show. Do you know what I mean? Because I remember like people, I don't know if they were laughing at me, but you know, kids, kids are just kids. Yeah, they yeah. start saying things. So I, I felt at that time they were laughing at me. So that kind of, I would say, affected me going forward. And um, yeah, I'd always be, I'd always be shy if the teacher said like, Gerald, can you come up in front of the class and, 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 you know, read this and I'll just get read like turn like a tomorrow or everything I'll just start my hands are sweating and then as I got older I think going into football so again going into sports it kind of let my personality come out a little bit more people started recognizing me as oh he's actually good at football that brought the confidence out in me and then even on the pitch I wouldn't lead you know vocally but as a player I would lead because you know just just doing yeah. things that like if we're losing one nil you know get the ball and get a goal back etc things like that and then as I got older again I wasn't even now doing these podcasts I never thought I'd yeah. be doing it do you know what I mean like speaking yeah. what you're saying in terms of words I haven't been the best so I thought how can I improve that how can I get better so obviously reading books I've seen yeah. you've got books behind you and we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. talk about that a bit later on as well but um I had a mentor, well, still one of my mentors, where he he took me to Belfast um, when I was working with Arsenal at the time. And um, he took me to like prisons and proves and and speak to them about my journey, what I went through, because I never spoke about it. I never spoke about, you know, me quitting football and and hanging around with people that I shouldn't be hanging around with. And I remember the first time I, I, I did it and I was just so nervous. I'm thinking, why are you nervous? This is your own story. Do you know what I mean? Like own it, embrace it. But it was like, once you do it, you kind of like break that mold. And like you say, it's like you make leaders, do you know what I mean? It's, you could see the potential and it's like yeah. kind of nurturing them to, to get to that level of, you know, being confident to speak. And would I say I'm I'm confident to speak publicly? 100%? Probably not, but I'm better than what I used to be. So it's, a, it's an ongoing process, do you know what I mean? So again, I yeah. totally agree with what you said in terms of made leaders and and and, and we'll speak. What, what was the inspiration behind that? Why did you start that? Why didn't you get into coaching? Or something behind uh, what, the scenes. Uh, to be honest, you. Um, <clears throat> so when I when um, when I was like getting near the, the the age of like thinking about what next, um, I was like, I never thought of coaching because I thought to myself, I've I've been a, a way, so I've travelled a bit away from home as Leeds, Stoke, yeah. and I was like, I was in Scotland at the time, um, and I was like, you know what. I was like, 
I can't, I don't want to go into, away from the family, I don't want to go into coaching, which means I'm going to be doing another 10, 15 years where I'm doing this lifestyle might take me away. Like, I don't want to be like sitting at home applying for a job and my first job might be in Scunthorpe and mm. I've got to take the job otherwise I'm not serious because I need it and I'm away from home being away again and not seeing the kids grow up. It's like, yeah, no, I, I can't, I can't do that. Like, I don't want to be that self. I want to just be grounded a little bit. So, um, <clears throat> again, words, I love a bit of words and talking. So I thought to myself, what I'm going to do when I was in Scotland, I was writing for the, the Scottish, Scottish Sun. So I did a journalism course. Okay. I was writing for the, the Scottish Sun. I thought my plan was to do, get into the journalism, like do some writing and, and build up a reputation as a good journalist and good with his words and, you know, well, well thought out. Um, pieces then make the transition to in front of the tv but then it wouldn't just be someone just come for football they give him a got to wear a suit and tie goes yeah but like now his his words is even more respected because he's done the journalism stuff that gives me a little bit more Incredibly. of a and yeah sitting on there um and do that but then when i was doing the journalism in scotland i had my own little weekly um column in the scottish sun um it's really good i thought buzzing um, so I thought when I come back down south, I, I, you know, Sun, Scotland, Sky, and I thought the Sun, England would be the same, but they're, they're sister papers, but they're not mm -hmm. the same. So it didn't quite work of like, oh, I'm going to get a piece for the Sun down in here. Do you know what I mean? So it was like trying, you know, I, I was at Oxford, so I got a little bit in the Oxford um, paper and it just, it didn't work as smooth. So I thought, okay. Um, so I was doing a little bit of the media work, but it was, it was bits where it was like so sporadic. Um, I was doing a little bit on Chelsea TV, just like doing a little bit there, which is good. But for me, it was like, you're, I want to, I want to, I want to lead. I want to, I want to, I don't want to just be the the pundit and then Michael. Yeah, great. It's brilliant. And then it, that's the bit you don't get to see any of your personality. You can sound like any, anyone else, yeah, you know, you yeah. can't really bring it. So it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, and it was so sporadic. It wasn't like that. I could, I couldn't even get to work on my craft because you get a bit of work there and you have to wait that bit there. So it wasn't even something you work in your craft. And plus it was like, Phew. like, you know what? Like I want to, I just want to go and I'm sitting at home waiting for a call. It's no way to, to earn a living or mm. to keep me occupied. And it wasn't even giving me that buzz. Like, like, so you know, all through the later stages, I've always wanted to help the youngsters and help people or something. Like, oh, you should get into, sometimes you should get into um, uh, motivational speaking and talking. Yeah. So I thought, okay, it's an idea. So I went and uh, found this lady and we did um, like intensive one-to-one -one course of, you know, doing keynote speaking, how to develop your own speaking. So I knew the formula, how to create my own. Someone said to me, oh, you know what, keynote talk on... Um, the the art of kicking the ball i can go and put it together and yeah. deliver a 45 minute keynote so i've done that um so i was doing that and then there was a bit of thought actually i want to as well i like the idea of coaching and remember coaching is a a new term especially in football because it was just managers mm -hmm. and managers manage and having coaches now that coach you know in the coaching term in itself is only new because you know no one really asks you, why do you do it? How, why can't you do it? It's like, do it, can't do it. You're in, you're out. So it's just managers. We need someone that can do the job. Not why can you do the job? Maybe we can develop that. So I like the idea of helping. So I went and done an executive coaching course because I thought to myself, I want to go and start delivering to the biggest corporate companies in the world and delivering my message there. But I didn't want them to go in there and they go, well, you're not qualified. So I went mm -hmm. and done... Uh, the best coaching um, uh, course, the most get the best quali coaching qualification there is. So it takes away all the excuses. And now when I go there, the only thing they can say maybe is we need some more experience, you know, mm. or so it takes that away. And I know that, but I'm, but my thing is to count experience. But this is what you don't have. But I just wanted to do do that. So that's the sort of the journey. So my thing with made leaders was developing my own company. Um, you know, using my background in sport as my the way I lead with um there's so many messages in in being a, a footballer that the, the skills are transferable there's so many parallels between sports and business um that people don't even realize 
there's so many skills that a, a footballer will have um, that he doesn't realise. And you yeah. don't realise until someone points them out to you because you think they're just normal. You know, you have to, they're skills you have to have to actually get by in football. Even a, a 12-year-old will have certain skill, skill sets and qualities, but then obviously they're not as developed. Mm-hmm. But you have all these skills that footballers have that they don't realise. That's why sometimes when they come out of football and they take on St. Kells, that they grasp it quicker than someone else mm-hmm. that would yeah. grasp it. I mean, they have all these skills. So that's why I go in and that's why my leaders started. Um, you know, and don't get me wrong, it's not a, a an easy journey because the the perception of one of a footballer is, you know, brash, loud, not troubled, educated, flashy, not educated. Because, you know, if if you said to someone in the, the, the work environment, okay, you've just done a meeting, someone's outside, how'd that go? Um, well, yeah, uh, well, they, you know, they're not going to sound articulate. So when someone's just run for 90 minutes and they're saying, yeah. how'd that go? You know, they're not always going to sound articulate and it's not something that, it's not a skill set that they've had to 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 learn or require. Um, so, you know, if you said someone in the working environment that's, you know, done a meeting, very articulate, that now go and run round, oh, you look really funny running. It's like, well, yeah, because it's not a skill set I've needed to have. So in someone explaining you know, why they did something and how well they've done it after doing it for 90 minutes at elite level, it's not a skill set that they're required to have to get them this far, but they're judged on it. And they judged the whole um, industry is judged on how a 17-year-old answers how mm-hmm. he played a game. You know, and like you, it, I, when you were speaking just a minute ago, it made me laugh that it's funny that people, one of the biggest fears people have is public speaking. Yeah. And that stems from school because... Teachers go, get up and read. <laughs> it's like, what, what, what? And then like now straight away, so straight away, every experience a kid has of reading is just because the teacher put on the spot, like, you read now. And like, mm-hmm. you're like what? Uh, and then you've got your peers that found it funny. Oh, my man went red yeah. there, I didn't read that. <laughs> you're like, right, I don't want to read again. Yeah, like, yeah, read yeah. And now like, you're thinking, oh, I hope I'm not, you think you're not looking at words. I hope I'm not getting read, I hope I'm not getting read. Mm. Well, like, read, and like, then you get in trouble because you don't know where you are. So the experience of stand up and public speaking it's always a bad one. It stems mm-hmm. from school. So now people like got to read like, rah, like, no, 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 that's not for me. I don't mm-hmm. want that experience because you go back to the childhood. So there's some people that are, are good at standing in front of people and yeah. reading and some are not. But you, we always get judged on what, you know, we're judging a kid that worked on a, a, a set of skills mm-hmm. to get him to this level, but he's getting judged on, on how he can't stand there and articulate what mm-hmm. he done and how well we've done it. So um, it's the perception of, of football is, is, isn't, is you know, one one that's like, you know, really good. You know, what yeah. can you learn from a footballer? What can we learn from not playing football? Because it's, it's such, everyone's like, what can you learn playing football? But they will learn something from an athlete. Mm-hmm. They will learn something from uh, a rugby player. They will learn something from an uh, Olympian. Do you know what I mean? But football, what can we learn from that? You know, what can you learn from someone that's, played rugby but you'll find something to learn so it's just because it's not you know the rugby background of maybe universities and they come from you know because once it was a, a semi-pro sport and you know yeah. people come from that world and they know that they have the association the athlete you know again the association you know that they've got the journey it always comes to the olympics olympics is always a great story mm-hmm. do you know what i mean of oh you went from there to there and you won the olympics so with football, it's like, yeah, they see it every day to so I what footballers. And then they read in, you know, this one, that one, that. And only now with the media, that actually other sports, you see that not every, there's no, there's not all saints in other mm-hmm. sports. Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah. know what I mean? You know, mm-hmm. you've got cricketers um, on nights out being in trouble, mm-hmm. rugby players in trouble. So it's not just the young footballer, it's, you know, it's young sports people in yeah. general and yeah. young people in general. So, but the perception is different. And, you know, part of me is like, I want to go in and change the perception. Mm-hmm. I want to go in and change that. You know, when I hear people like, you know, like, wow, just from hearing a, a bit of experience from my football journey and how those qualities have helped me and how they can help them and change their perception. And like, wow, yeah, that's that's the, um, a little bit of a buzz mm-hmm. for me. No, do you know what? I never thought about what you said in terms of when players basically finish running around for 90 minutes and you expect them to 
to kind of articulate themselves where, you know, adrenaline is pumping, you know, you might have won, you might have lost. So there's a lot of emotions running around. So it's kind of hard to kind of sit there and be like, oh, this is how I think the game went because you're still in yeah. the game mentally. Do you know what I mean? People are seeing it from the outside looking in. So, and you yourself, you would know, you know, being on the pitch is completely different. But um, what for me, what you said in terms of what people can can learn from like footballers and or athletes in general, it's like the hard work, the resilience, determination from being dropped maybe sometimes to actually picking yourself back up to sometimes abuse from fans to, you know, like nowadays we've got the social media where the social media is just like slating players um, for or whoever fans that have got the ability now to to write their opinions on sometimes their opinions, not sometimes, most of the time the opinions are ridiculous because you don't know what's going on behind that person's life. Like, for instance, a prime example for me was Raheem Sterling. No matter what this kid done, it's always a big thing. Do you know what I mean? Whether he drove a smart car to training, it's like he's 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 rich. Why is he not driving a Ferrari? He's driving a, the the Range Rover. The Range Rover's dirty. Why is he driving a dirty Range Rover, mate? It's been raining outside. Do you know what I mean? So it's like yeah. it's all these things, and it's like for him to still perform, to go on the pitch, to some t- to being racially abused again, which for me that's it makes no sense because what someone's skin color what's that got to do with someone's playing ability or anything like that do you know what I mean so it's like for me my question like leading up to that is do you feel some of these players are under more pressure these days compared to you know your era where you grew up where it was only like the tabloids um obviously you had fans you know running their mouth or whatnot yeah but it, it wasn't as much as the social media, if that made sense. Like, do you think there's more pressure on yeah. these players? There, there, there's, 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 there's huge pressure. And I think, you know, like most things, um, people tend to um, put money next to behaviour. Mm-hmm. He's earning that much, so he should behave this way. You know, he's doing this, so why is he doing that? And I think as football's grown and the Premier League's grown and the money's grown, you know, growing up, you know, before, say like, for my generation, before my generation, my, my coach, Graham Ricks, you know, his generation, they used to go out, you know, remember it's pubs them days, they yeah. that sort of, they'd go out, they'd have a, a drink, they might get a rival set of fans, you might be, he's Arsenal, we get a few Spurs fans in there, you might kick off, they have a fight in the pub, they might smash the pub up, like might get, things get broken, they go on to the next day, give the, the landlord cut 100 quid, fix the pub up, no problem, it's it's done. Nothing written about, it's just one of them nights, the landlord mm-hmm. fixes pub, even better than it was before, he's sorted. My generation, you know, you, you, we're out, um, and, you know, you, you're going out on a night out, um, there's no camera phone, so you're going out, everyone's getting up and doing what they're doing. Unless you come outside the, the club, drunk, falling over, remember the tabloids outside, that's yeah, when you hit yeah, the papers. Yeah. You, you're coming outside, you know, you're with the, the wrong woman. That's not your missus, front pages. Um, you know, it was it was the selling stories sort of era. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You sold a story, sold a story. So you can keep your nose clean, you know, pretty much. Um, but people are still, remember, people are still doing the sort of same things. Now, you're in, the, you're, you're in a, a bar and you're sitting down talking, me and you are talking, yeah. and someone's over there taking a picture. When there's, there's a girl in there, we're talking, someone's taking a picture. Now the picture is uh, Gerard and Michael talking to so-and-so model. And, you know, it makes out like he's having an affair with that. that do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it, it's a camera phone. So um, we, we play a game. Um, and, you know, back in the first generation, something in a pub, hell abuse, whatever, if it gets into altercations, it's unheard of. Mm-hmm. Them days now, my generation, people hurling abuse, again, not much is said. Maybe he goes to the paper and says, oh, he tried to attack me. Nowadays, finish the game, my man's get on the phone before he even got in your car. He's rubbish. Uh, how are you earning a living? Blah, blah, blah. So the, 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 where the social media is a, is a great platform because it brings people closer together. People can connect and people can, you know, it's, it's a great platform for that. But just like most things, when things are abused it's, it's, and used in the wrong way, it's not. So people can... As much as the fan go, oh, Raheem, oh, you are an inspiration to me. Thank you very much. Love what you're doing. Carry on doing it. Thank you. Thank you. It's like, oh, look at you. Like, look at you, flash car. Look at you. Mm-hmm. And everyone can say what they say. So you've got the negative stuff from the, 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 the fans that want to do that. And now you've got the media. Where now the media is trying to catch you outside 
the 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 club being drunk or doing something wrong. Now they don't have to. They just take a picture of you in your car and say, like, 100, 200 grand a week, Raheem Sterling, like, being tight, driving a smart car. Yeah. But then he's then the next day he drives Ferrari. Look at him. We've got Sansa over there struggling to eat, and he's buying a Ferrari. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's a world where you're under more pressure. Then you've got the pressure now he has to perform, and he performs mm-hmm. every week. Mm-hmm. And for me, you know, when I speak and I and I, I talk about the elite athlete, the elite um, mindset, I'll use Raheem Sterling because when you talk about resilience, you know, is 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 been here what went through with a young person, um, from what he went through at Liverpool, the abuse he got, you mm-hmm. know, for a decision that he wanted to make, um, immense, and then he went with that pressure to to Manchester City and still performed. The focus he has. One of the qualities say like the focus has where he can block out all the noise and go on the pitch and perform. Do you know what I mean? The, the discipline he has. Do you know what I mean? Because you know they're always looking for him to trip up. Yeah, yeah. He don't trip up. Do you know what I mean? They're always looking for him like make a mistake. He doesn't make a mistake on and off the field. He does what he does mm-hmm. to 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 put himself at that elite level consistently requires discipline, <coughs> development. He's always getting better. Mm-hmm. So if you're not getting better in a pep team, you're out of the team. 100%. He's one of the focal focal points. He's always getting better. Everyone's going, oh, I don't know if he's going to work with Pep. Look mm-hmm. at him. Look where he is now. Do you know what I mean? He's one of only four players to score 100 goals in a Pep team. Um, Messi, Aguero, and um, who's the other one? There's another name. Um, it'll come to me. But he's level. So when you see that the, the social media, it, it's great. It brings everyone together. Mm-hmm. But it also gives a, the ability for people to abuse that yeah. closeness and that intimacy. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, is, is, is it such a thing where people should have to deal with people who say, oh, you're, you're a role model? OK, yeah, we get that you have to act a certain way as a role model. Mm-hmm. But you shouldn't have to bat off racial abuse. That's not in the, in the memo of becoming yeah, a, a yeah. professional footballer. You shouldn't have to uh, bat off just abusing your family. That's not in the memo of becoming a professional footballer. Because you're a public figure, you have to take that. That's, mm-hmm. not, that's not right. You shouldn't mm-hmm. have to bat off the decisions of buying your mum a house and, and being abused for that, like, you know, in, in the media. So there's certain things that um, are not right. Um, there's certain things that you shouldn't have to to do and have to put up with. So as much as social media is a great tool, because yeah. people connect, you connect with all sorts of people on social media, good. I um, mean, you, and you build relationships with just like, you know, through that power of social media, but also it's, it's, it's something that's very much abused. No, for sure. I agree with you. Definitely agree with you. And and again, he's someone that when I do my coaching, I, I use it as an example, you know, for the young players to look up to and and see, you know, even now, I think Pep's giving him the uh, the captain's armband you spoke about earlier on, where it doesn't necessarily mean that you're a leader, but again, it's kind of like making, like developing him as a leader, you know what I mean? Just little yeah. things like that. So, but um, let's talk about your career a little bit, because Mike, you came through an era where there was ballers. You had to be a baller to come through. Do you know what I mean? So for you to come out of that sort of environment, what where was your mindset? And 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 was it something that it was installed in, in your household, or was it a thing where your environment kind of created that that hunger to to go and and achieve the thing that you did? Um I one thing I'd say is um like going going reeling it really back, like you know, I always arts like you know, sometimes when I'm talking, you know, you know, you, you, you deal with young people, you're thinking, how do you develop like determination in them? How do you develop this in them? Like, you know, you try and, you know, you want someone to be more determined. How do you, you get it out of them? And, mm-hmm. and, and I know from a, a young age for me, um, when I was, I started at Enfield Rangers, North London was at Enfield Rangers, and I started football um, just because my mum wanted me to get into something. I was never a Caribbean family. My dad was more into cricket and, and the horse racing and the dogs rather than football. It wasn't a football household. He never, like, you know, he wasn't going to have no football team. Yeah. You know, so we grew up near North London. Spurs was down the road, our nearest club. We never, had, like, wasn't, like, football. Um, so my mum used to work Ford Motor Companies that was in Edmonton. Um, so someone goes, oh, I'll get him into football. I know our club. And she sent me down to Enfield Rangers. So I was just raw. Mm-hmm. Didn't like, you know, I was, I was eight, nine years old. I was just raw, just just had pure, I was tall, gangly, pace, pace and power. No control, no technique, just pace and power. 
So, you know, we was training, like, on the, we had, we was one of the first clubs uh, had, like, little Ast- AstroTurf. It was, like, the original... Uh, sand one. Yeah, yeah, sand yeah. one, you know, and, and sometimes it come up like the carpet and over time, you know, the little bit yeah, come yeah, up, yeah. you know, yeah. That if old you graze school, your legs on that, whoo, it's going to yeah, burn yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do slide tackles on <laughs> that, do you know what I mean? Um, so before like, all that black pimples, it was, like, <laughs> yeah. sand, you have sand. So we had there, so it was just, like, pretty much warm. So... I was there, and a lot of um, my teammates were like, like at Spurs, mm-hmm. like Spurs. So, and I was like, sometimes they were training, and I was there was only a few left, and I was like the one that was was at Spurs. And he was like, you know, my thing was always all right, cool. I was always chasing, okay, all right, and looking to develop, looking to get better. So, I had that in me from a young age. Hey, I'm gonna get better, get better. So as, so, and I always say this to my son. So, like the the talented ones were at Spurs, and they were there. But I was always grinding to to mm-hmm. get better, to get better. So as as I caught up, now we're same ability. Now I have this ability, determination that I can work and grind and grind. And where they was talented, they never really had to work and grind. Now I started to excel, and every environment I had that, and every environment I chased, I wasn't the 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 England schoolboy. Oh yeah, and went through the. No, yeah. and that that straight trajectory, I was like there grinding. I went to my when I when I went to my secondary school, Enfield Grammar. I wasn't in the team first of all, like eleven. So I wasn't in the first eleven. Mm-hmm. I started off in the B team, and then like you know again working myself to get in the A team, um, and then finding myself and grinding, always looking to be determined and working and determined. When I went to when I was at Chelsea, um, schoolboys, um, wasn't the the you know we had. Uh, some England schoolboys there, you know, some people playing in the the county team and and all that sort of stuff. So it was it was always me having to work and develop yeah, and listen yeah, and yeah. learn. So I had that and I had that all through. Um, there was no guarantees, you know. I got my schoolboy forms. There's no guarantees me getting my YTS. I had to work for it. I got my YTS and I just ground it out. So I got my pro um, pretty early, but I had to work and grind. So when I, you know, Glenn Hodder gave me my debut and and I come start coming through. Even then, I was always working because it's never guaranteed, mm-hmm. and always had to work hard because I couldn't rest. Because all of a sudden, now as soon as I got into the the team, Chelsea started to develop. Glenn Hodder yeah. come, Chelsea started to develop. So now I'm in a team with Mark Hughes. I'm like I'm watching Mark Hughes like on TV. This is Mark Hughes. I'm like wow. Do you know what I mean? So it's like this is Mark Hughes. Mark is Mark. Do you know what I mean? I'm thinking this is Mark Hughes. That Mark Hughes is a superstar. I don't care. Even yeah, like Mark yeah. Hughes, like this is Mark Hughes, big fires. So there's always, you know, all of a sudden now you got you got Rude Hullet. I'm like, this is Rude. I just watched him yeah. in the Euros. Like, you know, what I mean, every man's like it, Rude. You know, round round my ends, like because he's a black man, dreads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, rough. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so like, do you know what I mean? Didn't really look like the, the tash wasn't good, but like we let really, really, really <laughs> that go. But like, yeah, like he's like Rude. So it's like, yeah. So like, got Rude Hullet. Like now we've got like. That big team, like we've got superstars, and like mm-hmm. I'm playing with people. So for me, it was always having to grind and work, and yeah. grind and grind. So I had that sort of determination to work hard and listen and learn. Because even when I was uh, before Glen Hoddle come, in the, my first year of YTS, like I had a season where I just got loads of, um, you know, you get three points for a yellow card and all that, yeah. and I I end up getting like sat up. 56 points which I'm going to go for the FA like ridiculous like just lack of discipline ridiculous and I thought that I was going to get sacked yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. rah and I thought I can't go home until I got sacked from football because that's like sacked I can't what am I going to mm. do like like so you know luckily Glenn Hoddle come Graham Wicks come and, and then there's a little change of, of mind and thing and he started to you know smooth out the, and he changed my mindset and how I did things but it was always a, a thing for me of, of looking to improve and learn and, and mm. through my career I've always been in an environment you know, where there was like players that you had to learn and, 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 and get better and develop or you get left behind. Um, so that that thing of, you know, determination, you know, looking to be disciplined and looking to like develop my stuff is, is, was in me from a young age because at a young age, it was like, there's always better players for me. Mm-hmm. And I thought, no, that's where I need to be. That's mm-hmm. the target and that's what I need to get to. So... When when the likes of like Marcel Desai, who's played in your position, La Berth came in, where where was you at? Was did you have the same mindset where you was like, no, nah, these are incoming from my place. Like I'm, so, I'm gonna be number one. 
so when 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 uh so Frank LaBeouf come under um Rude. So I, I was playing with Frank LaBeouf, always playing with Frank LaBeouf. And I built up you know, we won uh the League Cup and we won mm. the Cup Winners' Cup. Stan Holiday, the World Cup's on France ninety eight. Uh, Marcel's playing, you know, all know about Marcel, brilliant yeah. player, one of my like look up to. Um, then they sign him in the summer. I'm like, rah, sign him mm. Marcel. He's played the cup final with Frank LeBouff. So I'm like, cool. But my thing is, I've always, listen, when I went to Chelsea 17, I'm saying, I'm the best defender in this club. Not the best player, I'm the best defender in this club. There's no one, like, I'm strong, I'm fast, good in the air, I'm the best defender. And I believe that. Like, no, it's not like, you know what I mean? The best defender. Not like, you know, Frank LeBouff had to ping in the ball, whatever it is, but I was the best defender in the club. There's no one in the club that done that and what I, I could do. And I stood by that and I believed that Marcel come. I don't, don't really matter. I'm the best defender because all I need to do, defend, win the ball, give it to someone that can play. So I don't need to do the six-yard ball. Mm-hmm. That's not what my aim is. Like, I know my strength, so win the ball. So my thing is, I'm the best defender. All I need is just the 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 fair fair playing field. So Marcel mm-hmm. come, I'll get three season. The first game of the season, Marcel and Frank LeBeouf start. We're at Coventry. Bit guy, a bit peed yeah, up to be yeah. fair. Like, okay, cool. I just have to work hard and grind. They lost the first game. Okay, cool. So they're playing a little bit. And Frank LeBeouf wasn't playing well. Like, wasn't playing well, inconsistent. I thought, Luca, just play me and Marcel, man. Just mm-hmm. play me and Marcel. Just play. Wasn't happening. You know, I was coming on Frank, like, you know, and I always laugh. Like, well, I was on the bench. Like, Frank LeBeouf used to go down about 10 times a game. So when you know if you're if you're on the sub bench when a player goes down in your position the, the physio's going go and warm up she so go and warm up so Frank LeBeouf goes down go and warm up man he's up come back down go down oh, get up go and run like sometimes I'd sit run out Stamford Bridge I'd go out and I'd just go and sit next to the ball boy because I'm thinking he's gonna go down a bit mark me run back down he's go down up and down all the time it's annoying me in the end I'll go I'm not going he get up in a bit he get up in a bit I'm not going out like. Get, dude's got, no, he's gonna get up. Look, see, told yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, and I never, I never, I, I, I never forget this story. Um, we was at Highbury, and uh, I was on a bench with Pan Arsenal, uh, and I was on a bench, and uh, right, he was there, and me and right, a good friend, and 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 we're there, there and like he's going, dude's man, I come to the bench, going right, I don't know, man, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, bro, I don't know, right, he goes, no, nah, man, sure, like. It's, you know what I mean? I think he's just come back from injury. Yeah, so yeah. Listen, I'll tell you, look, look, I guarantee you, dude, watch. I think he's that thing now. I guarantee you, as soon as I get on, he's coming off. He's coming off. He's a pussy, man. I'm telling you, he's coming off. <laughs> I'm like, the book. He's coming off. Watch. Every time. He, watch. As soon as I get on the pitch, he's going to come off. I go, most probably, most of you, if I was you, I'd stay warmed up. Must be like 65 minutes, maybe 60 minutes in. Like, they're going to they're like, right, hey! Right, he's gone down. Watch, dude, watch. He's run down. The whole eyebrow, he's like, right, yeah, right, right, right. He's on a bench, he comes on. Five minutes later. Dudes! Come on. No innit? way. Frank the book's gone off. He's gone, told you, innit? I told you, my man. He's got like, fine, all animated. I go, I know, I know, I know, like, I know. Um, but yeah, so he's always going down. So it was, it was a case of where... I just didn't feel wasn't it wasn't like getting a fair yeah. shot like wasn't and the, the be fair the, the beginning of the season running it back beginning of the season when he come fair play to Luca Luca Vialli like the, the manager at the time mm. um, when he signed it was like we played the Super Cup against Real Madrid I was like oh man like what I ain't even playing now and then Luca put was up was up training at Monaco at the time it was at Monaco so you train with a training pitch and he goes dudes I need to speak to you. I think I goes he's gonna tell me to playing he goes listen. For what you've done, you've got us here. So you're going to play and put Marcel in midfield. So part of me is thinking, yeah, if I do well here mm-hmm. and this works, he could play Marcel in midfield and then not have to like, do you know what I mean, I'll play at the back. Or if anything, he's going to take Frank out. So um, obviously he started playing at the back um, and then I, I just didn't get in. And my thing was, uh, my mindset, not is in a quick way, but I could have stayed at Chelsea um, a little bit longer. Um and I thought myself, you know, I I, I want to play. When I finish football, I don't want to be like, oh, Chelsea win everything. And yeah, that cup final, I was on the bench. I didn't play, mm. but I've won that cup one. I just want to play. So when I mm. come out, I want to know that I played football. Like I got into to play football. So it was like, I just need to play football. I don't like this. You know, any any pro knows that 
being on the bench, you know, your week's ruined, you, you, you do everything with the first team, and then you go to the game Saturday, you don't play, then you've got to stay out and do the, the horrible running after the game yeah, where everyone's yeah. getting showered box and coming in and, you know, yeah, all that sort of, come on, get, get right, get right, mm. thinking like, what are you shouting for, like, mm-hmm. what I was doing, like, well, come on now, yeah. like, like, you're doing the running, it's just horrible, sometimes it's cold, you're stiff, you've mm-hmm. got to go and do the running, then you're coming in, when you're coming in, all the food and the sandwiches are gone anyway, so you're all hungry, <laughs> and the sandwiches and the, and the food's gone in, like, you like got a guy in there. The dead ones are bus. left. Yeah, 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 the, the egg and cress ones yeah. are left, like, <laughs> Um, oh yeah, so um, so then you, you like you, you, you like, and then you come in on Monday or the reserve game, and you got to play reserve game. And then you got to do the training, or you or you do the reserve games on the Tuesday evening, you know, you know, or the Wednesday your, your day off. So your weeks just like mm-hmm. changes where, and it's like you're you're in between, so it's horrible. Um, and it's like and I want to play, so it just it just the the thing where I think listen, if I'm honest, um. It, it was it was suited Chelsea because they had this um, young kid going through John Terry. I don't know how he got on in his career, um, <laughs> but um, JT, <laughs> I think yeah, JT done all right. was coming through. Yeah, JT was coming through. Uh, so for them, it's like, well, he can come through, mm. um, and he's got a bit of time. The Marcel Frank combination can stay a little bit longer, and I think within like a year or so, um, JT broke that pair in, and then. It speaks for itself, but I, 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 I didn't want to do that. And then the, the chance of going to Leeds, mm-hmm. um, and I like what they were doing. It was pure, um, uh, young. It seemed like it seemed like the environment, like mine with my youth team, fun, English banter, but on the pitch, were like mm-hmm. unbelievable. And and it and it proved that way. Um, so it, it was like, did I want to leave London? I, I wasn't. I wasn't really fast. I thought yeah. it was a new yeah. adventure. Um, and I'm glad I love I love living in Leeds. Um, really good. Met some great people. Um, but it wasn't a case of oh Marcel's here. It's just a case of I wasn't gonna change that. Um and it wasn't a case of me I didn't have a, a run with playing with Marcel that mm-hmm. it didn't work. I just didn't have a run. Um and so it just didn't work. So I wanted to leave. Was you, Matt, was you one of those people that if you weren't happy, would you go to the manager's office and be like listen I'm not happy you need to sort this out or was you one of those ones that you'll prove to them on the pitch if you had the chance yeah I I, I wouldn't knock straight away I'd wait, let me just grind it out first mm. then if I felt I was doing right then I'd say something or say what is it I need to do like what am I missing not like oh, hey, why am I playing yeah, yeah. and I was never one of them it was just a case of let me just show and do it I remember I always tell a story I remember like when Rude was manager, and uh, so the story with Rude is that uh, Rude was like player. So Rude went from player to 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 manager, and as a player, yeah, it was cool. He's like, yeah, lovely boy. He's just thought, hey, lovely mm. boy, lovely boy, and uh, he was cool. And that. then he went from manager, and he just like he switched. There's this air of like distant, hey, hey, and it's like it's frustrating. So he thought he could play uh, centre back with mm-hmm. Frank LeBouf. but it, like they didn't have any legs. They couldn't. Uh, and then what I gave the team was no team can go over the top because there was their clean up in the air, bang. Like I had that. You know what I, I what I couldn't do, Frank LeBouf can do in the six mm-hmm. yard ping in the pass and that sort of stuff. Still raw in my in my game, but I gave the team much more. Um, so there was no legs in that. T- we, we, remember we played Ipswich. The name of the team is him and Frank LeBouf, and they were awful getting done over the top and blah, blah. So then I said, um, we've done a train. I want to speak to Rude. So I, said, uh, I remember I did training and we used to be at Harlington. It's not the Cobham that everyone sees. It's Harlington. Mm-hmm. It was like a college. So I went to see Rude. I said, uh, he was in this room watching training. So I knocked on the door, like, Rude, is it possible to have a chat? And he was, he was facing like this way, looking at the window. I was behind him, went, all right. So I was like, so I waited. Right. I waited now. Like so I waited now. Like so I was like, so you know, you like you wait and you wait, but like thinking oh, that must seem like. But it seemed like it might be like ten minutes. But it might have been three or three minutes. But like I'm sitting there, like just pure silence. I'm like, <laughs> you know, like I'm thinking he's rude. And again, he went. You're being rude right, right now, rude. I'm like so I'm, so I'm like so yeah. So I'm like. <laughs> And then, and then, like, he's just like, he's like, turn around. Okay, lovely boy, what is it? 
I went, just want to know what happened. I was like, why I wouldn't play? You haven't explained why I didn't play. So he, he was like, mm, why you didn't play? Because I wanted to try something, okay? And then walk past and breeze past. Oh, like, like that's I'm frustrating, not an though. Person. So then, <laughs> yeah, I was angry. So then, I remember Rich in in Rick's in the in the in the corridor. Leave it, leave it. No, like, like, mm. and then left it. So like, no, they, they. I think he tried that combination. I think one more time, it didn't really work. Um. So for me, like the the whole knocking on the door thing wasn't always my thing i felt i'd, I'd speak and I'd, I'd rather speak to the manager on the training field rather than that whole environment of knocking on his door it seems very more confrontational in the, in the, on the training field you speak to him get a little bit more honesty sometimes you catch him off guard and yeah, they've got yeah. time to like you know and they don't feel you know sitting there along in their table like yeah you're in my area and that now they've controlled kind of takes maybe it takes away some of the, the power plays they mm. want to play. It's just, and it's just less confrontational, Gaffer, like, you know, you're on the training floor, this is where we're here, like, yeah, yeah. and get them to speak. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm more one, like, I will show you, I will show you mm. why, you know, and if it doesn't work, then speak in and say, like, I've done this, this, and this. Is there anything more I can do? If there's not anything more I can do, what do you have options? Mm. Mm. So then you move, when you, you move to Leeds and you had the players like Rio Ferdinand, Jonathan Woodgate, Lucas Radaby, uh, I think Mat- Dominic Matteo. Dominic, think, Mate, yeah. yeah, he was there as well. Your the likes of yourself, again, that environment of competition was around you. Again, was that something that you thrived off? Like to have that competition, that that kind of brought out the best in you. Yeah, I mean, so when I went moved to Leeds, it was it was uh, Robert Molinar, Jonathan Woodgate, Lucas Radaby, like the the four there. So I went there. And David O'Leary says, listen, I'm signing you. I know I'm signing you, like, for 4.5, which is mm. big money then. Back then, uh, was someone a to work, work, Yeah, someone trying to work out, it'd be the equivalent of maybe, like, 30, 40 million now. Um, so, um, uh, so I said, okay, cool. I said, I just, all I want is a fair shot. I just come from an environment where I didn't think I was fair. If I'm given a fair shot, again, I'm confident in my ability. Mm-hmm. Um, so training, we started training. We went, so I got there. And was going to Sweden pre-season. So as soon as I got there, I was on a way trip, which is sometimes the best because you're you're in that environment of seeing everyone every day and you're getting to know your teammates. So we train in. Um, like I remember the first training session, the person who impressed me the most was Alan Smith, where mm. like this guy, like, he was young. Smith was maybe about Smith was maybe 17, 18, but like he had the hold up play, kind of caught me surprised, but hold up play like the Mark Hughes. Bang, rolling, trying to roll, man. I was like, rah, this brother's like that, yeah? Okay, mm-hmm. cool. And then you had Harry Kuehl, like, like his pace and sharpness. It's like, oh. And then, you know, you're going around, like, you know, Bo I knew about Bo. But, like, up close, this team was like, wow, mm-hmm. boy, this, mm-hmm. they've got some ballers. Um, so doing well, doing well in training, doing preseason games, playing well. Like getting man in the match in the games, I'm like, everyone's like, you know, letting the teammates know, oh, we've signed a player here. Like, we knew about him, like, we've signed a player. Um, so, we've gone through pre season. I'm thinking, I must, I must start the first game of the season. It's like between me, Woody, um, and Lucas. And then the manager, David Lewis, called me, said, listen, I'll be honest with you, like, you've been excellent for me. But for what they've like, done for me last year, I, you know, it's very close. I'm going to have to go with them. And mm. I've just, Reap the reward of this sort of sort of favoritism at Chelsea with um, yeah. Viali, so I can't really grumble. I thought, okay, cool, I've just grind, and but they started off well, so I couldn't really get in. So I've just signed, and I didn't make my home debut for the club until it maybe be like October, November. Like it's a long time, mm-hmm. a long time. So um, I remember. Uh, Planning some games, get finally getting in, and then after not long getting in, I think I ruptured my Achilles. So it's like, Done. like that. That's that. Like, yeah, but like, so then in the time I ruptured my Achilles, they signed uh, Dom, Dom Matteo, uh, <coughs> and uh, and Luke and and Rio. So now. Uh, when when I went away, there was two internationals. I come back now. There's four. 
So there's like five centre halves like competing for two spots. So like Dom Dom and and, and Rio like put together this partnership where Dom's left footed lend mm. itself to that. Dom's like Scotland captain. Rio like was like playing unbelievable, unbelievable form. And even Lucas, like club captain, couldn't get in. Mm. Woody uh, couldn't get in. So it was like, well, so, but like all the time, all the time, the, the levels in training was like a joke. Like the standards in training was like unbelievable. Like, you know, you're having uh, to defend against uh, Bobby Fowler, uh, Mark Viduka, Michael Bridges, Harry Kuehl, mm-hmm. Alan Smith. Um, you know, the, 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 the levels were just like high. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? You got David Batty, Olivier Decor, um, Steve McPhail, like all pulling, all like Lee Bowyer, all top, bad Jason Wilcox, mm-hmm. bad players. Like the standard of training was like sick. Like every day, um, and it's like so you you can only get better, but the only difference is, for most you don't have the platform to show. You just mm-hmm. show that you're not playing. So in that time, I was always improving, always getting better. It just just didn't have the the platform to show. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and the reason that everyone was doing so well is because if they didn't, there was someone to come in, and if they come in. You might not get back in. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So mm. that that environment leads that the standards was was the higher. Like you know, you had Danny Mills and Gary Kelly right back, both internationals, mm-hmm. five that one spot. Like Ian Hart left back. Do you know what I mean? That the the competition for centre half was right, like amazing. Mm-hmm. In the midfield, you had like um, Bats, Steve McFell, Olivier Decor, Jason Wilcox, Harry Kuehl, Lee Bowyer. Um, yeah, it was just like and this was yeah that 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 Lee's team yeah, was nostalgic. Eric, yeah, Eric. Backer, when you think like, about you know, it, oh yeah, 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 he was a baller as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was just unbelievable, unbelievable, and it was like just like just competition was just high, and that, mm. that the strike So it was just it was just high all the time. So um, <clears throat> I always got better. I loved the mm. competition. It was it was just a, a case of I didn't get a chance to. To, to to show I didn't have a platform to, to show mm-hmm. it reserves mm-hmm. like oh, uninspiring you know you try and do well you know at, you know Wakefield at, on a Tuesday night seven o'clock you try and do well but it's like you know you still got the rugby markings on the pitch mm-hmm. it's like yeah it's 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 you know you try but like yeah it was it was it was a good time I hear you man um before before we get into a quick little fire round looking back at your career now playing over 400 professional games, won competitions, played with some of the best players that football can offer, played against some of the best players as well. Looking back at it, as a as a young boy coming from Enfield, would you ever thought that you'd achieve those things? No, no, no. Not getting into football when I did. I, I still think of me getting on the, the 149 bus to Enfield mm-hmm. Rangers. Um, for my first training session um, and having to get off because I couldn't find my money uh, and having to walk the bus and say, well, get off thinking I was scamming it and having to walk all the way to Cartwright Lane. Starting there, even going to Chelsea the first time to Battersea Park, um, going there, all these players thinking, wow, man, these players are good. Um, You know, my aspirations, you know, back then, your thing in football was you know, get into football, get a pro contract, you you have a career, you come out, you buy a pub, you retire. You know what I mean? That was like the 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 the, the career, like you know, all the pros, yeah, they come out, they bought a pub, oh yeah, that pub, you know, that was the, the, the career path. You've done well if you you come out of football, you buy a pub and then you know you have your own home and it, mm. like so my aspirations were just to just to get a pro contract. You know, and it was always, I always set the goals like, it was like, okay, get a schoolboy, sign my schoolboys, okay, sign my YTS, okay, sign my pro contract, okay, get in the first team, okay, stay in the first team, okay, get back, do you know what I mean? So it was always little small goals. So as it went on, like just to look back and now, and I say like playing some of the stadiums, playing with some of the, the those players I played with, playing against some of the players I played against. I mean, I was, I was doing a, um, a thing the other day and, and you know I found um clip I was telling a story about when I um 
a man marked Wayne Rooney and Ronaldo in one game. I do Rooney the first half and Ronaldo the second half, man marking, you know, to keep, you know, Ronaldo 45 minutes of marking him and he didn't score, you know, man to man. Like, it's a proud thing for me. Like, mm -hmm. you know, what man to man? Yeah, like, I'm on him, man to man. That's my assignment. You know, and frustrate him, stop him scoring. Yeah. So you look back and, you know, plan against them, plan against arguably one of England's best players ever, Wayne Rooney, playing you know, against Steven Gerrard, you know, being teammates with some great players. All the, all the names of the stadiums and, you know, you know, are being forever in the, the Chelsea history books as a team to win these trophies, mm -hmm. you know, still the only be part of a team, the only Chelsea team to win the Super Cup. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, mm -hmm. beating Real Madrid, you know, and, and all them sort of bits that I, I, I have that I stand proud of. And as a player, you don't, you don't, because if you speak about it, oh, big time. So you kind of, mm. you put it to the side. It's only now I can sit there and happily say and proudly say, because I need to, to say them because it's, it's what I speak about now. It's what I'm saying that I've been in that environment and it might use my experience to help others. So I'm very proud. Well, I thought I've, I've done it all of that sort of stuff. Not at all. Someone that had, um, I'd say limited, skill set mm -hmm. but just wanted to improve and improve and improve and improve the areas that he was good at uh that sort of eliminated the areas he wasn't yeah very proud i was gonna say i'm very proud that um, i achieved what i did and the environment like i said to my my kids like you know i could i could walk past the uh, any player i played with they can't say right well, abused him they say mm -hmm. hey, good defender but, hey, yeah do you know what I mean? And that to be proud, like, you know, no one can look at me like, no, my man's, my man's mm -hmm. rubbish, man. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's, a, it's people's opinion say it wasn't very good, but, you know, no one could, you know, and I'll take that, but no, no player I played against would say easy game, mm -hmm. rubbish. So, and that, and that level, some of the best players, you know, to, to grace the Premier League, you know, couldn't say that. So it's proud. Oh, powerful, man. Powerful. Quick fire round um, with you, Mike. Um, you probably yeah. answer some of these already, but um, first one up, best player you've played with? Gianfranco Zola. Yeah, and I played with some good players as well, very good players, and he stands above. And so when I look when I look at the players I've played with, there's some who's who of Europe: Viali, Laudrop, Hullet, Hoddle, Poye, uh, Decor, Batty, Martin. Yeah, and like you know, he stands. Hughes. Do you know what I mean? He stands uh, above them. Some elite players you mentioned there, boy. Um, toughest opponent you've come up against? Um, the best player or toughest? Toughest, like both. I'll, I'll do. I'll do both. Uh, toughest and best. best player. The best player, Thierry Henry. I think for me, had everything. You know, he was. He was. I don't know if anyone realized Thierry Henry is like tall as well. Tall, slim. I'm. I'm six one. He. He stands like my size, tall but slick, fast. Like I've never been like only two people out done me on a foot foot race. He's one of them, pure mm. Olympic sprint pace, skillful, good in the air, tough as well. You know, like you try and intimidate a man thinking, mm -hmm. yeah, man's like, nah, 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 he's not he's not about that. But like, I think like, you know, when I speak to Olivia Decor and speak at um, you know, Jeremy, like where he come from in, in France, like he wasn't soft. So he's mm. like, You're not doing that to me. So mm -hmm. yeah, he had he had, he had everything. The toughest, toughest, um, like tough. I mean, this is a question that not really tough players like like no one could be tough. Everyone could be, but like the hardest and toughest. I think like the hardest, hardest game one off. I think Patrick Cliver okay. played at the New Camp, uh, and yeah, I thought I was doing all right, but he was just just his movement, which is always that like, one step ahead. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, Patrick Cliver that one off game again. Heavyweight names there. Right, next one. Um, best manager you've played for? Oh, I'd say, I'd say Glenn was giving my debut, but I'd say Gianluca Vialli. Gianluca Vialli. But I did like Johan Boschkamp when I was at Stoke. But okay. Gianluca Vialli was the best, I'd say. Him and Glenn Oddle, either or. Another day I might say Glenn Oddle. Today I'd say um, Vialli. Not bad, not bad again. Right, next one. Biggest Mona you've played with? Biggest Mona? Oh, There's a few of them, always in football. Yeah. 
Why is moaning? Danny Mills was a moaner. <laughs> he was a moaner. Mills, he was a bit of a moaner. Um, he didn't want to do the sprints. Uh, oh, oh, Mark Baduka. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he wouldn't like, he'd like me. Like his, 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 his build was like mine. Like, but he didn't like sprint. I could sprint. He, he'd just moan about everything. Yeah, yeah. Mark Baduka, I'd say the biggest moaner. Cool, cool. Right. Um, who was always late to training? Uh, Paul Furlon. Paul yeah. Furlon, when I was when I started off, like he he was living in Enfield with me, and I was a young lad, and Glen Oddle was the manager. So I, you know, he was always on me. So I wanted to be on the time, but Furs used to drive me to training. But he was always late. So if he was late, <laughs> I was late, and I was in my car again. You know, I couldn't say, bro, I was a young yeah. lad. Drive faster. I was like mm. sitting there like. I got to take. I got to take the, yeah, the abuse when I get in. Yeah, yeah. So when I, I he, uh, he'd park up and he used to just walk. I was sprinting in trying to get in, but first Mark Baduka as well. He was late. Baduks was laid back. Yeah, he was very laid back. Australian so, lifestyle. Yeah, he had no, no speed pace. He just like just just strolling. Ah, come on, man. <laughs> you know what I mean, right. Last one. Um, best lesson you've learned in the last six months. Best lesson hmm. is uh, tomorrow is never promised, man. I think mm. with the whole the whole thing going on, you're hearing and stuff. Tomorrow is never promised, so you know, be grateful, be happy, you know. And it's you know, it doesn't have to be you know. People when you start talking, like people think spiritual and that. You know, it's just it's just life in general. Like it's mm. more to appreciate what you have. Do you know what I mean, happiness is appreciating what you have, not always like what you want. Um, and tomorrow's never promised. There's too much going on, you know. So I appreciate the now. Yeah. So I think that's the that's the 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 biggest lesson. I think tomorrow's never promised. No, powerful man, and that kind of rounds it up. And I appreciate again just your time, um, sharing the stories and the knowledge. And I'm sure whoever's listening is bringing value to them. We'll put the disc- uh, the link in the description regarding made leaders um, for people to check out. Um, we'll leave all the social media down as well in the description um, again uh, Michael I really appreciate your time thanks again for sharing the knowledge and and um, I thoroughly enjoyed it and I want to say a big thank you as well to Marlon Marlon King who who, who organized this um, so I really appreciate yeah, that yeah. as well living King. life where my man's living <laughs> he's life living, he's living. <laughs> you know what I would I would I would say this like for me it's, it's really good when you see your peers doing really well and for me I see someone that like you know he's gone and created a path on his own and showed mm-hmm. someone there's a different path not only the media not only uh coaching there's a different path you know just go and do what you have to do and and, and others will follow and it just it just made a little niche for someone to say I can do that so for me to go and see what he's doing um wicked like I see it all the time you know he's his own man 100%. Not following anyone, he, he, he was never that way as, as a player, anyway. Um, you know, that and that was like what turned people off or what draw people to him. But he was always himself, and being authentic in the world is forever trying to change you is a big thing. So, big up, Kingy 100% big up, Kingy man. But, mate, thank you again, man. And, um, um no we'll worries, keep in man. touch, really appreciate We're it. Definitely keep in touch, cool.